Yes, but I'm fascinated by his rhetoric. I mm -hmm. think a study of his rhetoric would be very interesting, the way he uses imperatives. Yeah. Understand that. Yeah. I've never heard anybody say that. And it's very powerful. It's very interesting when I say, understand America, yeah. that we must do this, instead of saying, we understand, or we know that, or you know, whatever it and is. And he does say, know this. Know this, yeah. know this. Mm -hmm. What a strange rhetoric. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that he's got is great pitch. Mm -hmm. I can't even imitate that pitch. The pitch is completely unusual. Mm -hmm. Because it, and, um, when you know, I can't, and if I hear, I'd have to hear the sentence and do it right. But his pitch goes down, but most people's pitch goes up. Um, it, it goes down, so it's very authoritative. Uh, and, and that's, I think, a big source is just the way he says it, his actual accent and pitch. The pitch is quite amazing. I'm always aware of it, because nobody else talks that way. Yeah. So, so when we talk about voice, then we've got the actual voice. I'm talking about oh, the and actual then, voice. And is then in, we've got the it's voice a major paper. field of study. Look, a lot of being done now, for instance, with what the difference the tape recorder made. Mm. Talk of the tape recorder. Yeah. Uh, Cage wrote on that. People like mm. Steve McCaffrey have written on that. Mm. How once you can tape, think of what that should have done to poetry. She could have used mm. that, and it has done it to some people's poetry. When once you can use the tape recorder and you can have different registers of voices yeah. and you can have one voice interrupting another and you can have various voices, then you can produce a whole other kind of poetry mm -hmm. that's very rich and very exciting that should be taken advantage of. <clears throat> once a technology is invented, you can't get rid of it. Mm -hmm. You know, you really have to um, use it in some way. So I do like, by the way, theories like, I like some of the things like Lev Manovich, yeah. you know, the things on the computer. And I like... Um, you know, I like Kittler, I like some of the th theories of radio, which is a fascinating topic, mm. and much under-theorized topic still, how radio works. Mm. When you hear but you can't see right. what that does and what it's done throughout, and we still, after all, listen to the radio a lot in the car, and mm. we do in California, you do here, in Texas, um, so that that's... You know, there's so many interesting topics that way that are still never discussed, it seems to me. So I think, I guess, what I... What I, but this is just personal, yeah. but what I got tired of in, say, the Society of Critical Exchange, the way it was, is that, you know, I'm so tired of hearing about late capitalism, and mm -hmm. capitalism is that dirty word that all you have to do is say the word. You don't have to analyze it. You don't have to say what kind of capitalism, or how does it work, or could it be tempered, or is it different in different societies, or what, since the whole world is capitalist. There's no use just always throwing that word out and then saying, oh, and we're all shocked, and we're against it, and we're for socialism, but what, what kind of socialism? I come from a family of economists. I think that's why I feel that way. You know, my mother was an economics professor. And so I always could have got scolded for that kind of easy, you know, that you just need to throw that word out. And then everybody knows that's those are the bad guys. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to talk about the good guys. Yeah. Although nobody has figured out how this great socialist state would work. How would you get the government? Do you want the government to manufacture cars, for instance? You know, most people will say, no, not really. Well, are you going to have socialism all the way? What? You know. Uh, although the words socialism, so socialism and socialist were, of course, being used as enemy words leading up to the, the election. Because yeah. Obama was being branded as a socialist. By some and, people, and by yeah. other people being branded as much too right wing. Yeah, right. so, you know, that's right. Oh, the way those brands go, that's right, the socialist. No, but I mean for something like intellectuals, mm -hmm. where it's still, you know, socialism is the right thing. And yeah. then, but nobody ever really talks about how it would work anymore. That's sort of gone. So it's just, I mean, that's why I can't read. I just don't read those things. No. I, think the, the, I don't read the where left I, review of those things. The closest I come to a place where they have that sort of discussion is with the, uh, the, the utopian society. Yeah, well, sure, it's a utopia. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I used to ask Regina Gagne, I said, Regina, in your perfect society, who's going to drive the trucks, for instance? She said, oh, we'll all pitch in and do that. Or who's going to do this and this dirty job, the garbage collection? Oh, I think everybody will participate. You know, whatever. Yeah, uh -huh. we've <laughs> noticed. We've noticed that that world seems to be coming, don't we? But on the other hand, given what's been going on recently yeah. in the world and, and the financial thing, there, there certainly has to be talk of you know, how this can be tempered or changed. or It can't go on in this way, really. Mm -hmm. And so there will be now much talk of moving back to much more government interference and, yeah. mm -hmm. and what can be done. Well, uh, before, before I forget, um, when you were talking about, about sound and, and poetry, yeah. 
uh, it, it occurred to me that beginning in about the mid 90s, I want to say, um, poetry slams were beginning to become very, yeah. very popular. Yeah. Uh, it seems to me that this the way sort of crested yeah. with, with that. Well, did, I you, think was, did you find something of, of use? I think it was a good thing, and I know Bob Holman, who, who yeah. started them. What was a good thing about the Poetry Slam is it that's it. It puts, put poetry sort of on the map. Mm-hmm. Everybody went, and they could participate. Of course, like anything else, it's going to peak, because so many of the people were so bad, mm-hmm. you know, and everybody part- claps for everybody, right. and then somebody wins. Oh, the, the, novelty, the novelty mm-hmm. kind of wore off. And on the other hand, in New York... And in L.A., to some extent, most, but you can go to 10 poetry readings every night. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is a huge medium of exchange. Um, I think it's been killed a little bit by the Internet. Mm-hmm. Because, see, if you go on the Internet, you can find so much poetry. There's so many good yeah. blogs. Mm-hmm. Too much, perhaps. Mm-hmm. But I take a look every day at a couple of those and mm-hmm. see what's going on. And there is so much going on. The Poetry Foundation in Chicago, now, it's an interesting story, actually. Uh, the Poetry Foundation is the one that got all that money. Right. You know? Remember, they got the yeah, million. million and they so. have really improved. Poetry mm-hmm. Magazine is just as dull as ever, pretty much. A little better. Uh, the little tiny magazine, yeah. you know, which is the epitome of traditional poetry. But they have a very good blog. And on a blog, you can do more than you can do. Yeah. And, they, and the blog is run by a woman, I can't think of her name now, who's very good. And on the blog, they have fabulous things. They've had Kenny Goldsmith talk about uncreative writing. They've had, you know, all kinds of funny things and good arguments and good debates and all kinds of things go. So that has broadened the base enormously. And the point being that obviously on a blog, you can do more. Hmm. Are you going to have a blog? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, You can do a lot more on a blog than you can do in the magazine that comes out, Mm -hmm. you know, every month or whatever it is. So the magazine remains the state part for the mm-hmm. sort of state audience, but the blog is very lively and changes every day, mm-hmm. has all kinds of things on it, and you can hear all kinds of talks on it and readings. It's just really good. Well, don't be surprised if you get a, an email asking you to be a guest editor. Of no, a, I would love know. to do something on the... Uh, uh, yeah, you know, I think, I think, so in that sense, I think these blogs have made a huge difference. First of all, you get instant dissemination. Mm-hmm. That's a terribly important thing and a kind of wonderful thing, like the things that go on here. But um, my older daughter, who was at the Getty, who just did a show of the Russian avant-garde, and she's having a symposium in a Zaum evening, where she's having Christian Buck, Steve McCaffrey, and some Russian guy coming down to read the Zaum poetry and read their own poetry. And all kinds of people are going. Everybody's very interested in that. It's going to be at the Getty, and there will be recordings, too, and all this stuff of the early actual... Zaum and what it sounded like and so on, and uh, but but immediately it got on some blogs. Mm. Charles Bernstein put it on his blog, so then people know about it right away. You know, so you get a way of disseminating what's going on in ways that never were possible, and that I think is wonderful. The downside, of course, is mm. there's so much going on mm-hmm. that you can't kind of keep up with it.